morning, guys. Thanks for Good joining morning. us today. <clears throat> Marco? Polo, baby. Sorted. Okay, we'd have bet on in the office whether you'd respond to that. So that's, I just won. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, congratulations on the show. I've managed to catch the, a version of the first couple of episodes so far. So just, obviously, a lot of people have heard the name Marco Polo, but not a lot of people know him. He used to be a pizzeria in my old hometown anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm familiar with the name. But can you just tell us a little bit about what the show's all about, basically? Yeah, well, the, I mean, just what you described, right? Maybe, it's, you know, this, beginning with the swimming pool uh, question. And pizzeria is named after Marco Polo. And, and we know the name Marco Polo, but so few people know what's under it. And uh, so few know about his amazing accounts and, and this, this unique blend of, of fact and fantasy, but, but a, accounts that are largely recognized by historians as valuable and, and, and groundbreaking. And so that was um, the treasure trove of material um, that, that, that I worked from. Um, in creating the show to to really focus on this story that people don't realize, which is this young 17-year-old Venetian who was a pioneer of global travel, uh, who traveled into the court of Kublai Khan, grandson of Genghis, and was groomed and trained to become an emissary, an agent, and some believe a spy uh, during one of the most turbulent and pivotal times in the history of China. So it is just... Um, it's a long way from a pizzeria. Yeah, do you get all that from Wikipedia, was it? <laughs> <laughs> That's where it is. Yeah, and he's such a fascinating character. As you yeah. said, you know, there's a mixture of reality and fantasy as well, and what's true and what's not true. Yeah. But how important was it for you to find the right guy to play him? Obviously, Lorenzo is your is your star, essentially, and he's brand new to the world, so, because obviously his character's going to develop. So to find the right actor to portray that role, how was that? It was a long, exhaustive search to try to find Marco Polo. You didn't get my audition tape, did you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we must you know, have overlooked it. You look vaguely familiar. We looked in New York, London, Rome, Australia, New Zealand, and after a very long, exhaustive search, we, we realized Marco Polo has to be Italian. So we dove, we dove back into all of the Italian audition tapes, and there was Lorenzo's tape. It's a very interesting story how he was discovered. We had a lot of contenders and a lot of people that were near misses. And uh, it was in the 11th hour. And uh, John's wife kind of was determined to find this person, went through everything that we had looked at. It was an exhaustive list of, of audition tapes and found this guy. And the next morning, John sent me uh, his audition tape. We looked at it and it was just perfectly clear. Within 48 hours, he came down and visited us. We were at the studio in Malaysia and we had our Marco Polo. Perfect. Your wife obviously gets a finder's fee for that then as well. She gets a nice vacation for <laughs> a, sure. A nice vacation to Kazakhstan or somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, in terms of like the idea of showrunner, it's a, it's a word and a concept that I think for the public is becoming much more prominent now. So can you just explain a little bit about what that role is? Obviously, you're creating the show as well, but in terms of the role of the showrunner throughout a long-form uh, series? John, John's created the show, and my job as showrunner is to take his vision and realize it, and help to realize it, and to protect it. So a lot of what we did was I asked him a lot of questions. He would give me a lot of research. We would decide, for example, how do people enter the throne room of Kublai Khan? John would bring in uh, Tang Dynasty um, protocols that he had had as his research. This is what Kublai Khan based his, his pro court protocols on. Okay, we would adapt that and set it for all the directors. So my job was to kind of disseminate it to all the other people. I had a lot of help from John and other people, but yeah, my job is really to realize it. Once we finished shooting, I came back to New York immediately and started editing and then the whole, a whole other, pro other process begins, you know, composing music, uh, doing sound design, and, uh, and so on. So showrunner is sort of like the, uh, the overseeing and uh, protecting force for John's vision. Gotcha. And one thing I read about the, the show is that the different action styles that we're going to be seeing are inspired by animal styles as well. Is that true? Is that something that's in there? And if so, what animal are you getting off me in terms of what sort of fighting style might I have? I, I know one thing, I, I watch how people walk to deter, and I saw that, and I'll, I'll get to that and let you know, because okay. I think you have a future. But the, Happy days. Marsh, um, the world of Chinese martial arts that we get into um, was really organic to this, this history in this world, because we're in 13th century China, which was a time where the Shaolin Temple 
uh, Wudong Temple and these Chinese uh, fight styles were going on. And Kublai Khan was all about bringing in uh, the best, what he would call ministers of warfare um, and, and scholars from these different worlds and have his sons trained in this way. And um, so what, what I wanted to do was bring in um, an accurate Kung Fu background, but something that would really lend itself to the beauty and poetry of, of this, this transformation that Marco goes through. And the Shaolin styles are based on the five animal styles, where combat is inspired by survival tactics from animals that have been studied. So we're going to see that. We see that in the, the character of Hundred Eyes has, has mastered them. Other characters have mastered some of the more unique animal styles that go beyond the five animals. But it's very ex exotic and exciting. For example, our villain is uh, uh, fights mantises, crickets and mantises. He sort of has this obsession. Mm -hmm. And he fights in the mantis style. This is the Chinese ambassador. Yes, the yes, chancellor, yes. yes. The, yep, yeah. the, yep. the praying mantis is it's one of the later systems that, that developed, one of, one of the more lethal. And your style happens to be crane. I'm crane? Crane. Okay, like Fraser crane? <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of crane. Uh, no, that's brilliant. Listen, thanks a million for chatting. <laughs> Thank you. Best of luck with the show. Really Thank looking you. forward to seeing the entire thing pan out. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank you very much. Thanks for seeing us.